freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for this week's Masters. Joining me to break it all down, Greg Ducharme is here. Hello, Greg. Rick, um, I'll get it out of the way right now. What a week. This was this was an awesome, awesome Masters, and I'm excited. I can't wait to talk about it. And at the very same time, um, I'm sad. I'm sad now because I yeah. missed the Masters already. Yeah, we knew that was we knew that was going to happen. We do have some other major championships and big events to hold us over. There's a signature event next week. We're not ready to quite get there yet, but we've got a lot to cover on this Sunday. The plan is to get Patrick and potentially Kyle at some point. They are wrapping up their writing duties, and because of well, it, it was a decisive victory, Greg. But with the final n- nine holes to go, it was very wide open so those guys were not able to get their gamers done uh any earlier than expected this week yeah oh and you never know at augusta national i mean it, it, this was probably as known as it could be but you still just don't know because how many times have we seen catastrophe strike at augusta national we saw it today just didn't go in the direction that um would have been devastating for those riding a gamer. Yes. For the saying goes, uh, the Masters doesn't start until the back nine on Sunday. And that was incredibly true, Greg, because with about 10 holes to go, there was a four way tie. It was Scotty Scheffler, Ludwig Oberg, Max Homa, Colin Morikawa. Before we even talk about what happens, what happened next, what was your mindset? In that moment, as we were four wide heading to the second nine. Um, this is awesome, first of all. <laughs> second of all, I mean, I'm I'm very curious because Scotty had his struggles early. There's a little bit of up and down. His distance control seems off. And I thought Scotty was going to win at the beginning of the week. I'm not patting myself on the back. Everybody did. Um, and I'm a huge fan of his, so I'm wondering... How is he going to win? I know he's going to win. How is he going to win? Because it's not looking like it's not looking like that. It's looking like Ludwig Oberg is unstoppable. He has this smirk going. uh, He has this smirk going when he's holding putts that kind of reminds me of the Michael Jordan shrug. So I'm very curious about what Ludwig's going to do on the second nine. Uh, And then you have Max Homa, who's finally cracked the uh, the birdie list drought, and all of a sudden. Yeah, he's swinging really good and looking dangerous. And Colin Morikawa is hanging around, uh, made a great birdie at eight with a wedge shot that he knocked in there close. And it, this is this is game on. And at this point, Rick, it's pretty much as good as it gets. Yeah, I'm going to try to take this uh, a little chronologically. So so bear bear with me here, Greg. So here we go. We are just rolling four wide to find out who the first major champion of the year is going to be. That penultimate group was Ludwig and Homa. Homa's been steady Eddie through the first nine, and Ludwig rolls in a long putt on nine, and that's when you get the full-on – that's when you get the smirk, right? That's when you get the like – well, this just might be my day. That like that type of that type of look to get him to seven under. And then the group behind is Scheffler and Morikawa. We were talking about this before we went hot. Number nine is such a good hole. It's not it's not an incredibly difficult hole, yet Colin Morikawa makes a, a devastating double bogey. Yes, um, and he makes a critical mistake. So there's a couple rules with number nine. Um, One, when you're in the fairway, it's a wedge, and you utilize the backstop, right? That's a you you cannot come up short there. That's the first mistake. If you miss the fairway, specifically, well, I guess on either side, but specifically if you're in the pine straw on the right side of the fairway you have to keep your ball right of the flag. Um, Even if it's a little short, you have to keep it right because that left flag being so close to that bunker, there's a ridge right in front of it, a false front. If you're coming, if you're looking straight up the, up the hill at it, 
there's a false front immediately short of it. Um, but there's also a side bank on the left-hand side. So that's why when you see players putt from hole high or even past hole high on the right-hand side, they actually play it past the hole. And it gives you this really cool like candy cane like break. You know, it, it it's almost like if you make that putt from hole high, it's going to go in uh, on the back side of the cup. So if you miss to the left in those bunkers, you have no shot of getting it close. If you miss to the right, like we were talking about earlier, there's just, first of all, fairway for days, which I think is really cool. Uh, it also gives you an uphill approach shot. And now you just have that false front on the side. So Colin misses to the right in the pine straw. He's behind a tree. Uh, and now he's got a decision to make. He goes to the left, hits it in the bunker, if he hits it to the right, he has a very straightforward up and down for uh, you know for Masters tournament Sunday at the Masters standards because um, it's uphill and that's what you need to do at Augusta National. Leaves it in the bunker, ends up making a double, and this is the beginning of the derailment for Colin Morikawa. We'll get to the other uh, portion of that in just a little bit. Max Homa rings the bell at 10 and gets the crowd going, Greg. He makes birdie on 10. Ludwig makes a par there. And now you can start hearing the crowd rally a little bit around Max. It was it's uh, it was definitely a pro Scotty crowd. Don't get me wrong. But there was this little like, okay, let, let's see if Max and, and Scotty can go toe to toe here. Yes. Um, and at this point, Ludwig had made birdie at seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. Uh, Max made birdie at eight um, and and had a nice two putt par at nine. And he comes to 10 and hits that tee shot he hit all week long, a low hook around the trees that just rolls for days. Um, and that was actually a shot he tried to play later on in the tournament, which we'll get to. But he ropes it around there, gets it down into into the flat, and then hits just a perfect iron shot. It was a beautiful golf swing, so well balanced, and he knocks it in there close. Um, Ludwig hit the green as well, wasn't able to make the putt, but it was a big moment for Max Alma. Morikawa makes par and Scotty tacks on another birdie. So that means that Scotty birdies uh, eight, Scotty birdies nine, Scotty birdies 10. He gets to nine under. He's still holding court here, trying to fend off everybody else. And we enter Amen Corner, Greg. And I love when my master's is decided in Amen Corner. And this one was decided in Amen Corner. And a lot of the action came on 11. And I want to talk through this. Um, I want to, want to talk through this a lot because I was right on the side of the fairway, right side of the fairway for all of these groups coming through on this critical hole. So I want to break it down. I want to get your thoughts. Um, we'll obviously get to the conclusion of this and much, much more. But this feels like a good point, Josh, to take a quick break and hear from our partners. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ, anywhere, anytime, all the time. And we're back. 11. So that first group to come through is Ludwig and Homa there was a lot of wind there, but they could not figure it out. Um, I do remember what order they went in. Who hit first? Lud did Ludwig hit first or did Max hit first? Ludwig hit first. And hit it into the water. Yes. And from my angle, I mean, you, I could see it just get eaten up and like it was, it, it was just a, a, a heat seeking missile into that, into that lake there. Now, Ludwig, one of my favorite things about him is how decisive he is. Uh, and as soon as he makes a decision and pulls the club, he goes. I mean, it's two quick looks, club goes down, boom, he goes. And this was one of the rare mistakes where you could see him hit it and they had the shot tracker on it and it turns very abruptly to the left, catches the bank, 
uh, lands on the bank and ends up into the pond on the left hand side of that green. So it was um, it was difficult to you know it's a tough moment for him, a really tough moment. They were looking. Uh, you could hear he and Joe Scovern having their discussion. They were looking at the flag on the right hand side at twelve, and they didn't really show what what that angle looked like. But you saw where that was with uh, you saw where that was when Max hit. Yeah. So this was a, a moment Ludwig, who you know, for basically two and a half days had, had been fairly flawless and 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 we were not expecting this on 11 hits it into the water ends up making double there the the sends shockwaves through the crowd i think it sent shockwaves through max greg um i don't know if this how this came through on the broadcast if they if they showed the whole thing or whatever they spent a lot of time on this shot um many minutes it felt like trying to get this wind correct trying to get a committed angle um it, it was probably the longest i've seen a guy take over a shot in a in a long time so joey griner says to him they showed this on the broadcast which okay. was good so it, it it takes a long time they he, they have a club they're set uh it, they're going at the flag at number 12 and then it seems like the wind picks up a little bit and now they're he backs off and griner saying hey we got we got time here. They haven't teed off on 12 yet. Let's get this right. Um, and then they're, they're kind of talking this through like, okay, yeah, it's, it's at, do you like the club? First of all? Yeah. I think this club fits better. I think it fits better. Um, and then, all right. And now all of a sudden it's not the flag at 12. It's the right edge of 12 green. And it, it feels like they're just kind of inching that target over more and more to the 13. right. 13 T. Oh no, no, actually the clubhouse, uh, you know, I was, I just keep going right. It, because we cannot be in that water. Yeah. We could not be in the water here. And Greg, he did, he executes this, right. They, they get it right. He makes par. That felt like a huge moment. That was, that was teamwork. It was planning. It was execution in what was to that point of the event, the highest leverage spot of the tournament. Yeah. And it was, um, it, it was a huge moment and he executed it perfectly. It was a beautiful golf swing right to the spot. You need to hit it. And his ball didn't curve a whole lot, which tells me he hit a little cut up against it. Ludwig maybe hit a little draw that rode it, which is why when you're going with the wind, it can turn so abruptly and, and it takes such a sharp left-hand turn and ends up in there. Max has held, held its line. It stayed really straight which tells you it was a really well-struck shot. And then lastly, Rick, um, he, he didn't leave himself a gimme, left himself about four or five feet for par, which is probably a little hard for you to see um, because yeah. the patrons are a little far away from that green. And he he poured it right in. And it was a, a high-stress high stress moment, and he made it. So the final group then comes through, and Collins' ball... Uh, I don't think it even – it landed in the water, right? I mean, it was left all the way. I don't think it hit the bank. I'm pretty sure it splashed directly in. Is that correct? Yeah, it splashed directly in. Ludwig's hit the bank. Yeah. Although Ludwig's did appear – and the shot tracer is not always perfect. Ludwig's appeared to snap a little more. Collins kind of got to its apex, and then he was – you know, he gave a it gave an expletive. <laughs> now he didn't swear, but he, you know, blurted something out in frustration and then it was just gone. And that's a shot that Colin's been fighting pretty much all year. And he did a wonderful job this week of avoiding it. Um, and after his round today, he said he described it as getting greedy. He said he got greedy on nine and he got greedy on 11. And, um, you know, it looked a little to me like when it happened, I thought it was a shot that he had been fighting and, and just couldn't quite hold off that wind. But um, but perhaps the strategy was the issue, as he alluded to. Well, getting greedy on both 11 and 9 led to double bogeys on both of them. And this, uh, uh, you know, essentially ends Colin Morikawa's bid to be the 2024 Masters champion. We'll wrap up the rest of his card, but he is you know, five shots back of, of, of the leader. Scotty did make bogey on 11 Greg. He took double out of play, uh, makes bogey kind of just survives it. And now it's turning a little bit into 
a two horse race of the guys who stayed dry, Scotty Scheffler and Max Homa. Yes. Uh, and, and now Scotty has gone from nine to back to eight under yep. and Max is at seven under on 12 T. So it, that did feel like a, it felt like a big moment. And now we're pushing through a man corner and yeah. now there's another big shot that that they all have to go through. Uh, there certainly is. We all know number 12 and the things that it can do, uh, both missing short and if you are Max Homa, unfortunately, long, Greg. You you had to describe this to me because, again, the angles are weird and there was a lot going on I'm trying to bounce between groups. I did not see the Max Homa shot. So uh, from my understanding, he was long into the bushes and he took a he took it unplayable. That's exactly what happened, but it didn't land in the bushes. So this was interesting. Nobody hit it into Ray's Creek in these last couple of groups. Um, in fact, I didn't see anybody hit it into Ray's Creek there, but he, he hits it right between the bunkers like tiger in 2019, but instead of just carrying the front bunker, it carries to the back edge of the green. It takes a hop off the back edge and bounces one hop straight into the Ivy bushes. And you could tell right there, it's like you may as well have hit it into Ray's Creek. Now you got to take a drop. It's rolling. You can't, now he's got to place it, has a severe downhill lie, um, and isn't able to get the next one on the green and ends up making five. Let's add another voice to this conversation. We do have Mr. McDonald, not Ronald, but one Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Gentlemen. Let me be the first to congratulate Steven Yeager for his Houston Open win. We might look back at that one as uh, a like a crazy win. So that that's like one where you know strength of schedule. You win, you know, you beat you beat a team in week two. They go on and finish the rest of their schedule undefeated, and now you have a a, a quality win on your resume. Yeager, Masters champion. It's one of those you, you like. Uh, Yes. You beat them, so they beat them. <laughs> Via the transitive property, uh, Steven Yeager has won has won the uh, 2024 Masters. Yeah, that's one way to look at it, Patrick. We're going, we're going, we're going blow by blow here. Uh, okay. We are, we are in Amen Corner. Maxoma has just made double. Uh, mm. Ludwig gets through 12 on uh, at even par. He makes par there. Morikawa makes par there. Scheffler makes par there. And now this is where the gap really opens up. We have seen now all three of Scotty's biggest foes make a double on either the first or second leg of Amen Corner. Yeah, I think uh, tactically, Max Homa was the best player in this field for the first, what's 54 plus 11? 65 holes. Wow. Yeah, good job. 12, tough break, obviously. Maybe, uh, what did Immelman say on the broadcast? Mark's brother. Uh, it was too dry. He was afraid of being wet, but it was too dry. I thought that was pretty funny and a good way to look at it because I do not know how... I know he hates the tee shot, and I know he can't move the ball from left to, or from right to left, and he was doing it all week with the three-wood. You got to... After a double bogey, you kind of have to push the envelope on 13, I think, with the with the driver. Um, what do you think, Greg? Um, I well, I don't think so because you know that like like just because you make a double bogey doesn't mean you start hitting shots you don't have. Now, that shot on 13 looks way right, and he is forced to lay up from the fairway, which is a bad look, but He's trying to hit the shot he hit on 10, which goes like 500 yards with a three wood. I know it's downhill, but he's trying to hit that shot and it comes out dead straight. So I don't think that was a strategic error. I think he didn't get the ball flight he was looking for. I, I think he hit a bad shot. Um, I don't I, think it was a mistake. I hear Scotty Scheffler talk afterwards about needing to be aggressive into some shots. And if you're too conservative, they bite you in the butt. And I kind of think that's what happened to Max towards the end. I think he got too conservative. And at that point, it was too late because him being conservative kind of crushed him. Ahoma makes 
uh, par on 15, and he does not make another birdie the rest of the way. In fact, he makes bogey on 17, and he finishes up at four under. Colin Morikawa uh, makes birdie at 13, but it is too little – or excuse me, he makes birdie at 15, uh, but it is too little too late, and he gives one back on 18. He posts four under. Ludwig, though, gentlemen – bounces right back this dude this dude ludwig ai bounces right back after uh making the double on 11 pars 12 birdies 13 birdies 14 now the problem the problem here greg scotty's still making birdies too but ludwig is trying to scratch and claw his way back into this yeah i mean you look at that stretch of uh of 11 12 13 14 and ludwig loses by a shot in that three hole stretch and, and he hit it in the water at 11 but scotty made bogey there um he hit a smart shot at 12 ultra conservative left portion of the green but it gives him a chance and all of a sudden he's got an eagle putt at 13 a legitimate eagle putt at 13 he misses, settles for birdie, hits a great shot into 14. And what kind of ended this run was a tee shot way left on 15. I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but he hit it. It was a huge hook. Yeah, it, it really, it really was. And this is really where everybody starts to run out of steam. Patrick, uh, Scotty makes another birdie on 14, which I was, I was there. How close was that? It looked like it almost went in. Uh, yeah. Went. Like a foot. Okay. Yeah. Maybe less. Yeah. It was it like was, on the edge of the cup. You know, it, it, was, it was like three balls out. Yeah. It was all over it. And then he makes another birdie on 16 and Patrick, uh, when you get to 11 under par and everybody else is kind of, struggling to make birdies all along the way it was a very pleasant walk up 18 fairway as scotty scheffler captures his second master's title in the last three years yeah it was it was an unbelievable display of uh discipline from from scheffler especially around amen corner but going back to ai um I, i'm not like unconvinced that he just like didn't realize he was playing in the masters he he looked just so cool, calm, and collected. He was snacking around every corner. Oh, to have that young metabolism <laughs> again. Every time they panned to him on camera, he was just eating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, the they guy knocked out too. food. The guy knocked food out of his hand. Two holes later, he makes a double bogey. I don't know if and that's... he's eating a sandwich. Yeah, and then he eats a sandwich and makes a couple birdies. Might be a little correlation there. Um, but Ludwig... Um, I don't think we can say enough nice things about him, but for Scotty, I think the fried egg put this tweet out where he, his feet were lined up on 11 and 12. He is aimed at the very right side of the green on 11 and then 12. He's aimed right exactly where he hit the ball. And on 11, we saw guys get greedy. We saw guys try to win a major championship. When you try to like win a major championship, when you're not supposed to, there are moments when you have to put your foot on the gas, hit a big boy golf shot and grab it. It is not around amen. The first two holes at amen corner. Mm -hmm. That's like the, like we saw Cameron Smith try to do that in 2022. Remember he felt like he had Scotty Scheffler on the ropes. He said his golf swing was feeling good. And so he went for the right pin and he hit the water. And we saw Colin Morikawa get greedy twice in a three-hole stretch, and Ludwig, to his credit, bounced back. And Scheffler just, it's an unbelievable display of discipline and knowing when you should put your foot on the gas. API win. Players win. Houston Open. Steven Yeager got him. The, The Scotty Slayer. Steven Yeager. Masters. Win, Greg. If you if you needed any more evidence, uh, we're in this we're in the Scotty Scheffler era right now. Yes, uh, and I, I look at this Masters tournament, um, and it it separated out the you had to play so well. The lines, the line between being 
four over in this event and being four under is hardly noticeable. And it, you just have to be so precise. I mean, how many guys? What? There's eight guys eight. under par, and yep. Scotty Scheffler is eleven. Yep, that's that is high level, high level stuff. Um, and he he does what world number ones do, which is they know how to win. This is not his best week uh, with his, with his iron play, with his ball striking. He made some mistakes with his irons. He hit some uh, poor shots. He got off to a shaky start, but Mm -hmm. all of a sudden his short game's there to bail him out. All of a sudden his putter comes into life in, in the third round on Saturday, he starts chipping in and making long putts. Like this is just understanding what needs to be done to win. And and then you get to Sunday and it's time to take control. And then you lean, you start leaning on the ball striking and you just hit better shots than everybody else at nine, 10, 11, even though it's not on the green and he makes bogey 12, 13 is the right shot. 14, the perfect exactly. I know it ends up gimme, but he hits it right to the spot where you're supposed to hit it. You know, it's it's so exacting. 17, it, the exact spot you're supposed to hit it. 16, the exact spot you're supposed to hit it. I mean, it, it's just, uh, it, it's surgical. And there's a lot of different ways that, that he can get it done. Do you know how difficult it is, Patrick, to be the guy that everybody knows you're going to win the golf tournament? There, there was a consensus a week ago that Scotty was going to win the Masters, and no one was really willing to give you anything different. And then as the formidable favorite, he wins decisively. I know it wasn't wire to wire but it was close enough because he's within, you know, a shot or two of the lead. Every, I mean, he's in the mix every night going to bed. This is, this doesn't happen. The, the, the short, the, when we showed all those shortest odds ever at the masters, none of those guys want it. Like this doesn't, this doesn't work like this yet. Scotty is making it work. It's pretty incredible how, you know, he talks about how he doesn't read anything and when his apple notifications pop up something golf related he makes sure to to clear it immediately no matter what um but but then you have got like reporters and journalists asking him like oh you're the shortest odds ever you're you're doing this you're doing that um and none of it seems to affect him it's that that would affect 99 percent of human beings whether your ego gets bigger, your head gets bigger and, and it, it doesn't seem to, it's, it's crazy. It's his greatest superpower. I know we talk about his ball striking. We talk about uh, his around the green game, which I mean, carried home at many, many points this week, especially the first few holes uh, of this round. It was kind of similar to 2022 in, in that regard. Uh, but in between the years and just who Scotty Scheffler is as a person, he talks about all the time, his family, his upbringing, his camp, just keeping him in check and treating him like a normal guy. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable not to, not to get a big ego. And, and you hear other players talk about it too. Like Xander Shoffley went on live from this week. He goes, he, he just started laughing. He goes, it's incredible that this guy is the exact same person as he was from 2021, that Ryder cup team. You hear Tom Kim talk about him. It's like, he's the exact same person from when I first met him. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a credit to who he is as a person and credit to his camp. It, it's really cool to see. Tom, Tom Kim hung around to uh, congratulate him. Greenside. I wonder if Scotty is Tom's ride home. Maybe yeah. some, uh, what is it about Joe Scovern's guys just waiting around? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. L- Ludwig would never. No. <laughs> and, and, he, and he should never. Uh, Greg, I had something else about Scotty Scheffler, but I cannot remember exactly what it is. Well, I'll just add to what Patrick said. Um, And while this change has happened, he stayed the same person. 
But I've also noticed a little difference in the way he talks to the media. Like I get this sense that he understands his position. It doesn't affect him, but he knows it. So like his answers are getting a little longer, a little more descriptive. They're similar every time, um, but he's like playing the game a little more. And and he's still truthful and honest. But it, when Scotty first came out, his press conferences, like w- when we do um, shows on Sirius XM, we'll get a list of cuts from, you know, sound bites from guys. And there's a, an amount of time next to him. So, you know, if you have time to play it or not. And Scotty Scheffler sound bites would be eight seconds, 12 <laughs> seconds. He he like wouldn't talk. And we would be like, oh, what what's with this guy? He doesn't say anything. But now all of a sudden you're starting to see him give some deliberate answers and um, and kind of explain what it is that makes him so great. And there's a real beauty in that because he he understands his position, but it, it, it hasn't changed him. And I don't I, I can't think of a better example. Like I can't think of a better person for your kids to root for who'd be a Scotty Scheffler fan is a special thing right now. If you think uh, Scotty's master's odds were short, get, get ready. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be really sure. I, I'm assuming he's not going to play the RBC heritage next week. I assume he is going to withdraw from that. Uh, they have moved him to four to one for the, for the PGA championship, which is going to have a field twice. Dub- the size. Double. <laughs> um, he is four and a half to one to win the U S open. Again, that's going to be like 150 guys. And he is a great value, six to one, to win the Open Championship. Man, um, but Valhalla, you know who designed that? Scotty Scheffler. No, I'm just kidding. Who? No, the, the Golden Bear. The Golden Bear, and the Golden Bear. If you know anything about his golf courses, they oh, favor. Wait, 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 left or right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I mean. I was thinking about this earlier. Like he's going to win the first two majors this year. Thank God. And imagine, <laughs> imagine if he wins. Imagine if he wins. He needs a PGA, Greg. We talked about this on Friday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> imagine if he wins the players and the first two. Ma- I mean, he could he could do the Scotty slam. Five get all five. The same calendar wow. year. He hasn't even had his newfound baby swag perspective yet. Which it is crazy awesome. just just how much better he is than everyone else. Like it is absurd. The baby worries me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What if he? What if he just stops playing golf? We've He's seen it before. Go be a full time dad. We've seen it before. <laughs> what if? Uh, what if he gets home and like Meredith's like, oh yeah, I had the baby on Wednesday. I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> like the nursery's done. Here's your child. Or like you know. That'd be Say sick. hi. That'd be a power. Say hi to Scott to Scotty the third. <laughs> is Scotty a junior? Yeah, his dad Scott Scheffler. Oh, yeah, go Scott Scotty I E, and then the baby's gonna be Scotty with a Y. I can't tell if you're kidding or not. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no, I have no idea about the baby. But uh, it, 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 is, that it, is Scott. Is Scott like? Do people name their kids Scott, or is Scott short for something? I think it's Scott. It's Scott. Now that I think about it, my uncle's name is Scott. Just Scott. So that was a dumb question. <laughs> um, it's, like, it, uh, it's one of those weird names where it's like the nickname any... longer than the real name. Yeah, it's almost like a John and Jack type deal. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know? a rich. I'm a Richard, and I go by Rick. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know? Did you guys know that Betty is a nick is a short a nickname for Elizabeth? Uh, Elizabeth has a million nicknames. Yeah. yeah. Beth, Liz, Betty, Lizzie, Lizzie, Ellie. Yeah. Damn. It's, it is, keep, it's, keep it's cooking. A lot. <laughs> it a is lot. a versatile name. Um, I got one for you. Okay. My aunt, my aunt Peggy. Peggy comes from Margaret. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, that's the thing. What? It's like a real thing. How, when I found that out, I almost Margaret. I I lost my mind. Where does that come from? It's got to be England. 
they're doing something <laughs> weird in England. Margaret feels like a very like Victorian era English name. She's like 70 years old, so it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, gents, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to loop back on a couple of notables. We are going to recap our best bets. <laughs> and then we are going to update this one and done. I hate this one and done. Uh, but we're going to do that after a quick word from our partners. I am a prisoner of this hotel. Why do they let you live? You must never leave. They can take away everything. You can't take away who you are. And we're back. Okay. I'm going to hit the notables here. As much as we talked about the big four, they were not alone on the leaderboard, Patrick, because Tommy Fleetwood matriculated his up his way up the leaderboard, uh, shot a three under 69, and finished in a tie for third with Max Home and Colin Morikawa. Did he get to four under at one point? He yes, at Didn't the end of the at the end of the tournament is when he got there. Oh my god! Um, I meant uh, he had a putt to get to four under on number eight, I believe. He did not. Get there on, he didn't get there on eight. He got there later. He got yeah, there he on putt. thirteen. Okay, but he had a putt to get there on number eight. Is my point? Oh, okay. Um, was it sorry, a long I, eagle putt? A three putt? Nothing. Did he make birdie there? No. I don't know. Where are you going with this? It was a birdie putt. Um, yeah. No, so my point. Not... I, I have nothing in front of me right now. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you make a par today on that one <laughs> hole? <laughs> my, my point is, I thought it was going to be a vintage Tommy Fleetwood post and come up like two strokes short. Uh -huh. I was I, like, I started him. I was tracking him. He had a couple good looks. Obviously, didn't fall. But when I saw that birdie attempt on eight, I'm like, He's going to shoot. He's going to get to like seven under. He's going to get to eight. Up. He's going to do something crazy. And then someone's going to clip him at the end. And it's going to be vintage Tommy Fleetwood final round at a major championship. Um, but unfortunately, it did not happen. Four under finished in uh, tie for fourth. Yeah. Tie for third. Tie for third. Scotty finished at 11. Ludwig finished at seven. So four shots. And then another three shots to everybody else. Four Dude, under. Where? I. Just did not watch the end of this tournament, I guess. I was I was head down editorial Patrick. I had my hat on. Um, always a rush. But I didn't well, I didn't know uh I guess Colin had to hit well, backwards on eighteen. Okay. Yeah, for 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 a for it being so tight until basically the end, the leaderboard is incredibly spaced out. In yeah. End. It's incredible. <laughs> it was it was truly bizarre. Uh Cam Smith gave us Excitement early, Greg, because he holed out from a greenside bunker on two, that is an eagle, to get to three under. Now, at the time, we obviously did not know 11 under was going to be the winning score. And we thought, okay, now he's within four. And we saw multiple two-shot swings. Nine was a three-shot swing for Scotty and Max Oma. So he was very, very live here. Um he did not make another birdie though, and he gave one back and played his final 14 holes at even par. But Cam uh will end up finishing in a tie for what is that, sixth? Tie for six. Yep. Uh tied low live with Bryson, which kind of sneaks up on you. But Cam Smith did what he what he does this week. I mean, he just kind of scrambled around, got up and down from everywhere, made a lot of pars, didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. Um, just, it was so difficult to find the, that birdie run and he wasn't able to get on one. So he never really got, he never really threatened, wasn't able to shoot that round of 65 like Bryson did, but all in all, a really good performance. Uh, Bryson played at one over. Uh, so he dropped from three under to, Two under. I'm looking for Tiger. Looking for Tiger. I'm scrolling, scrolling. Dead last. Scrolling. I still there. He is. Uh, dead last. So, star of the day at 11 under. Made birdie on two. I was there. He had a Ooh. great. Yeah, he had a great shot at the two. He had a very conservative putt because it was a, a difficult spot. He tapped it in. Uh, that was the last highlight because Patrick he made. 
Triple on five. Uh, bogey on six. Bogey on 15, 16, mm-hmm. 17. No, no. Sorry, sorry. I, I part of the last three. There's 15. I can't read. You know, I'm still getting used to reading like the over under boards. You know what I mean? Just switch, switch it. But but if I switch it, then I don't get the I don't get the hole by hole. I have to click into everybody's name if I switch it. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. So long story short, uh, Tiger Woods did not have a very good day. No, um, he looked much better today physically than yesterday. I think the back kind of flared up on him yesterday. Just ugly, painful to watch yesterday. Um, Today, drove it decent. The short game wasn't great. He left, I think, every single putt short today. Got nothing to the hole. Absolutely nothing. Um, And it was tough. It's tough. He did say he's going to go on a scouting trip for Valhalla and Pinehurst and Troon. See all those. Do his homework. Says he's got to keep on lifting. Dude, you, someone asked him you can take a week off from lifting someone asked him what his prep is and he's like you know i gotta keep on lifting gotta keep on eating gotta keep on grinding just he, gotta keep on doing all this stuff. it's massive it was uh it was cool though i mean the the patrons were out for them it, it seemed like they were giving them a stand to no know at uh every corner of the golf course but you, you look at their weekend rounds this is the first time he's played 72 holes since what the 2020 masters the weekend rounds at augusta 78 78 82 77 yeah i mean it, it, greg i want to get you involved in the in the tiger wood stuff here i won't i won't skip you on it I, I just like the the putting four rounds in a row on that body is i mean it it seems like it's going to be impossible no he he made swings that were so different than what they were the first two days he was so underneath it which is fatigue you could see it in his walk um i was actually covering him on feature group coverage this morning um on the radio and watching uh, this entire round and his gait was just he was struggling and it's fatigue it wasn't like the past couple years where it looks like he's he's hurt He's damaging himself. It just looked like he's out of steam, completely out of steam. Yesterday may even have been worse. Uh, so that was absolutely disappointing. Um, he is massive, and <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying that's a that that's a bad thing at all. But what's so funny to me is I always thought Tiger was massive. Like I remember in 2005 thinking tiger is jacked he's huge thinking in 2019 tiger is huge and you go back and watch the (laughs) when they show these replays it's like he is thin back then yeah now he's enormous he's getting bigger by the bigger by the minute he's a yield sign he's (laughs) legitimately a yield sign yeah, he's a perfect. <laughs> he's like a perfect triangle. It's unbelievable. It's uh, and then he's got the uh, the cul-de-sac going back to some of the Getty images were were tough for the top of his head. I, yeah. I thought he's gonna I have to make, on. He's gonna have to make a call on that soon. I, I thought on Tuesday it kind of looked in his presser that he got plugs. Yeah, um, I thought he did get plugs. Yeah, but definitely not because because it's he can he can afford it yeah. or. Just shave it. It is a. It's it's um, the cats. The cats got to do something with the fur. Can we? Can we? Uh, do we want to talk about the guy he played with today? Neil Shipley. I was in his interview. Yeah. What a sketch ball. What do you mean a sketch ball? Did you did you finish for the end of the in- interview? Yeah. What what? When uh, a reporter goes, I saw a Tiger hand you something oh, on the yeah. eighth hole. Oh yeah, and he said that. And he looked happen. at the green jacket. He goes, "That didn't happen." And yeah. he was like, "Oh no, I thought you did." And he's like, "No." And then they finished the interview. And then Butler Cabot, did you see that? No, I d- I did see that. Oh, he was giving side eye. Yeah, this big this side. guy is but up I, to something, man. No, no, <laughs> he's not. What is this side eye in regards to? I don't know. Look, let me listen. When you were the low amateur. In Butler Cabin, it is the most awkward thing 
because they're they're telling they're off camera telling you like okay when this happens get out of the shot like this, this is- we're get we got to get you out of here and so he's side he's like am i should i still be here should i still be here i feel like i shouldn't be here the side incredibly eyes, are i it, it was so obvious the side eyes but i, I know, know he's not up to anything he Wait. just doesn't want to sit, overstay his welcome. So, I so hold on. All right. So I, I so get me up to speed. Did you? Is there any evidence that he was handed something today? Did you see it, Patrick? I don't. Do you know who the reporter was? I would love uh, to follow up. I with would. Them. I would. Uh, I mean, I don't know his name, but I like. I don't know if you could show me a picture of two hundred reporters. I could probably pick him out for you, but I don't know his name. I, he was. Yeah, he was off to. He was just on the. He was one row behind me to the right picture of 200 guys and a that, quarter zip. <laughs> it was weird that his first i know <laughs> he i thought it was strange that he looked directly at the green jacket yeah it, it like he like, shouldn't have gotten something or like aren't you gonna take care of this guy though this guy's like you know what i mean i'm the low <laughs> i'm the low end. also go back to that photo was he's he getting, wearing he's getting was getting was he wearing the ramp logo all day or did he get that slapped on for Butler cabin? Was he wearing that all day? I don't remember that at all. Did they quick iron press one on him? Let me look. I'm, I'm not that. Right I'm now. not that astute. That would be uh, act activation. Josh says, a it, new, was, Josh new says it was all day. I just didn't notice it. So I guess, it wasn't, I guess it wasn't that good. Okay. Um, so Neil sketch balls. <laughs> he's, he's not up to something, although he did go to James Madison university. So maybe, but uh, Neil, oh, Neil sketch, Neil sketch <laughs> give him a break. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Very, very nice. Congrats guy. on low. I am. Congrats the on shot, low. I am. The shot he hit on two was sick. The uh, little, nippy. Little, oh yeah. He was, that was, he was, he was in a bad spot, bad angle. Hit he played bit. a great round today. Yeah, no, nah, he was very, for good sure. Guy. Very nice guy. Um, Anything. Oh, well, hold on. Let's do this. Josh should throw the bets up there. Um, I had a bad week, but the boys kind of picked me up here. So Justin Thomas ejecting loses me my top 20. Sergio Garcia ejecting loses me my Sergio over Adam Scott. I'm pretty sure those guys played the last four holes, like 17 over combined on Friday, which was like super, super fun. Now, Patrick you little, you little prognosticating boy, you. Chris Kirk over Keegan Bradley, cash it. Even with Keegan finishing that great today, got yeah. tight. Chris Kirk had the best round on Saturday. Xander Shoffley, Xander Shoffley, top 10. Congratulations. Easy money. Um, Yeah, felt good. I kind of wish I, uh, I'm kicking myself over the best bet. Like, really hard right now we'll get to that yeah, um kyle got xander over john rom and cam young top 20 but it is you greg it is you greg who had that man scotty scheffler in your outright column congratulations hat tip to you i i should have put him in there twice um i take no credit for this in fact shame on all of you for not having scotty in your outrights <laughs> You knew it's going to happen. All of you. Yeah. The other thing is, yeah. just go to the best bets because I actually say shame on Patrick because he he's, he it's deviated. Double shame on Patrick. Double shame, Patrick. You deviated from your whole thing and you picked Jordan Speed to win. <laughs> <laughs> he missed the cut. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> he didn't even sniff the cut. Man, we'll always have that birdie on 13 Friday morning after the race. Though I'll remember yeah. that. We'll always Isn't have it. it. I mean, we uh, this should have been a triple up. I can't, like, I, I can't believe I didn't do it. You got too. You got too cocky. When things are going too well, I tend to self sabotage. Yeah, Man. we're most, we're mostly just I'm mostly just pointing it out because I've lost my Sung Jam top Korean and Kyle uh Siwoo did not shake that ass to a top 20. Uh so we lost that. Greg, you you carried us here as well. Patrick Reed for a top 20. Yeah. You know, I've kind of ruined my uh my finishing position and and uh matchup. 
which was Will Zalatoris who finished top 10. I knew that that should have been my, my finishing position. Anyway. Yeah. I thought you did have Zalatoris, and I thought I had Bryson somewhere on this card. Uh, you know what I think that was, Rick? I think we did that on our uh, first cut on Sports Network. We oh. did a top a top 10 lock. Yeah. Mm. And I think you went Bryson. I went Zalatoris. We cleaned yeah. up. Yeah. But it's not in the record. It's not in the record. Check wow. the tapes if you want, but it, as far as I know, it never happened. <laughs> Greg, we we just got to give uh, a bit of a hat tip to you. You're you're crushing it right now. Oh, in the best bets. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, yeah, yeah, cleaning up. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Um, the one and done like run, Patrick. You and I have selected the same golfer in one and done probably five times over the over the last two years. I'm not sure we've made a single dollar in those situations. No, the first time, Rick, I re I remember it quite vividly. Oh, because Ma Max Homa won the Farmers Insurance. We won, so. yeah, we won together, and then we have never made a dime since yeah. then. Yeah, so we're averaging about 200k. <laughs> <per> <laughs> we both had Jordan Speed. What a dumb pick! So <laughs> dumb. Why are Okay. <laughs> Stinkin' Tiger Woods can summon the Augusta Magic. Phil Mickelson can summon the Magic. Patrick Reed can summon the Magic. The best out of all of them, the guy who's actually like kind of a good golfer sometimes, Jordan Spieth cannot summon the Magic. I, I'm like stuck in 2016-ish, like 2015 to 2017. I'm I'm just stuck. I'm like, oh. Speeth, he's still seven to golfer. ten years ago. Yeah, Justin Thomas. Oh, goat. You, you, you see him win five times this past season. Yeah, this is uh, like how, this is how I am for baseball, where I'm like, oh, CC yes. CC Sabat is still the best pitcher in baseball. I, th I think it's because I talk to my friends who are members of the Gen Pop about golf so much, and they only know like those guys. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, Rory won a major like a couple years ago, right? There are. Uh... There were some gen pop takes out there this week. I'll tell you that for free. Oh, I got grounds. to imagine. I got to imagine without without tech. No tech. So there was extra time to talk. And these people are, you know, listen, I would love to be like Augusta National uh, Country Club adjacent. But these people were like Augusta National Country Club adjacent. Like <laughs> the Masters is in town. <laughs> oh, Breckenridge. <laughs> La -da -da -da. <laughs> right. I just got back from Vail. You know <laughs> what? What? Uh, what was the the best one or most egregious uh, take of the week? They all just like they just shout out like who they think it is. Like, oh, like who's that? And so, so the 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 one that got me going the most was today. So you guys know, like when a got when somebody hits a shot, uh, like someone from the production, like CVS production like runs out in the fairway and like gets the number and like they get the camera set up and like they tell Dottie like what the number is. So that she has like all the information that she needs when she gets up there. Mm -hmm. They were convinced that guy who I actually forget his name. I think I've met him before was Colin Morikawa <laughs> <laughs> and they were arguing over it. And I'm like, that's the TV guy. That's the production guy. He's just wearing a polo. Like it's not, not any like it was just so the guy was like six foot five like it was not remotely close to column workout do you jump in in that situation no i never settle the dispute no i never ever ever jump in because i it, it, that is a can of worms i am unwilling to open yeah then they're gonna then they're, it's like oh how do you how do you know oh i'm in the golf business so yeah you're now you're not even watching golf you're talking no, Drake, and did I, you jump in no Definitely, not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> no. I'm kind of a jumper in her at times. Oh, if they're like, if they're like so egregiously wrong, I'll, I'll like just say the fact to them and just walk away. But if they're oh, so, that, that I but like if they're that. so okay, if you walk away, but if they're so egregiously wrong, like it, it, it is more likely that they are now going to use you as the resource and like, oh well didn't PGA and live merch and like, did, like, you know what I mean? Like you're, you've just opened up all of it. Yeah. There um, are times when you don't want to get into that. 
Yeah. Dang. Who, uh, so Rick, who, uh, who, who did the Augusta faithful like the most this week? What, how did they, uh, how did they take to Bryson? Not I've not. heard, I've heard mixed rumors. It was definitely very pro Scotty. I, I don't know if I told this story here, but they cheered when they put, when they posted a Bryson bogey yesterday, there were cheers. It was not a, it wasn't really, it wasn't negative. Like as he was going around the course and everything like that, but it was very pro Scotty. Interesting. Yeah. What about, what about early in the week? Did they like Bryson? Cause um, I, I, I feel like I found Bryson very much. Uh, he like feeds off the environment he's in. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was fine until it kind of turned into a Bryson V Scotty situation. Yeah. Like, so like Friday after Friday's round, like Saturday, I think it was more, we are behind Scotty. Mm -hmm. oh, which I think is cool because I think he's been underappreciated for quite a while. Yeah. Yes. Even when, when I was in Phoenix, I mean, he was the top guy everyone was cheering for. I was like surprised just given some discourse going around. him. Yeah. Uh, Josh, sorry. Can you go back to the picks, the one and done picks? So Kyle had Shane Lowry, 72,000. Mark had Xander, 620. Greg wins the week. And you, oh, this is why he knew, this is why he knew who the top, top lift guy was. Yeah. So he, yeah. Picked, he picked Cam Smith. So you got it. You, you did it right. You used, you correctly used the live guy and got the most out of it. Right. And it already taken Scheffler. Right. I still, Josh and I were talking about this beforehand. You still just wish. I know I won more money with him at the players, but I, part of me wishes I'd, I want to win the Masters, you know? So this is kind of disappointing. Yeah, isn't that a damn shame, Patrick? That the <laughs> amount that they got for this this win is like more than, this win that he doesn't even want, he would rather have the Masters, <laughs> is like more money than we've made this year. <laughs> no, I mean... Thank God I picked Scotty Scheffler to win the API, or else I'd be at like one million. Oh my! You're all, you're fine. You're within you're within two million. You're good. I know, but outside that, it's been a lot Rick's of not mis Rick's not good. Thank yeah, you. Rick Rick's in trouble. Same with uh, I same agree. With Kyle. My world is spinning fast. Things are going sideways for me. I'm not able to get off. I'm not able to write this ship. Although I do get I I get another chance next week. Um, Josh had John Rahm 57,000. So this is getting pretty tight at the top. It's only 60,000 between Josh and Greg, uh, and then 700,000 to Mark. Patrick is within 1.2 of Mark. Kyle and I are like, if you combined our numbers, we would get to Patrick. So it's not particularly great for, um, the boots on the ground this week. We were, we were pretty bad. Yeah. Greg, good job, man. You're kind of, I mean, you didn't win, but I'd give you like low am. You were kind of Neil Shipley of the week. <laughs> I'm in the Butler cabin. You're in Butler cabin. You did no, very well. I, I was thinking about it. I I already used Ludwig at Bay Hill. Um, Tommy, I was not going to play. Max, I was just not going to play. Colin Morikawa, I was not going to play. So I, I think I, I think I got it right. Yeah, my only other idea was Xander. I did see something in the chat a couple, maybe a week ago, saying we should have our run your pool standing next to our name as well. No, I vetoed We're, that. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Those get those numbers get pretty big. <laughs> Wait till I get. If I win next week, that's a great idea. <laughs> no, we okay. can do that. I mean, I just don't want to add more work for Josh. But it, it so it so it would be like you know, out of whatever it is, nine hundred and something, it would be like okay, Patrick's in two hundred and eleventh out of nine hundred or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good uh, idea. It's more work for Josh if he wants to do it. He can do it. But cool. I think it's just a terrible idea. The other problem is <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't um it doesn't update like in real time. So, like, as we're doing the show right now, the updated standings are probably not done yet. Okay. So, can you do favorites on Run Your Pool? Like, like PGA Tour leaderboard? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow, you want to be able to track us? 
Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it make it easier for Josh. All I'm saying. Do you know that Mark puts it, all of our picks into his PGA Tour app at favorites? <laughs> Did you know that? That's why he always knows. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, I, th- I thought him. I heard him on Amen Corner this week, and did he talk about it? A little giddy in his voice when Spieth was <laughs> messing up. <laughs> and he always he always gets I'm so, so if his, but no it's kind of true though because if this guy does miss the cut and he's on pga tour live he'll be like or he's like well outside the cut line he'll be like and here's jordan speed <laughs> teeing off on 18 <laughs> something like that and there is like some vitriol in his voice oh that's hysterical that's, uh, that's really good we have some we I have like some, that. We have some uh, questions, but before we do, I I um I broke down and I got the gnome today. Oh, you got the gnome. There yeah, was yeah. one left, dude. It is. Are, is it? Is it? Are, are we in a social experiment and we're all falling for it? Like I I think it's kind of interesting, but the fact that it is so popular makes people lose their minds. Yeah, I don't do you, get. I I don't get it. How many are sold each year? Do you know? Is they it like limited? Don't disclose that. It's very limited. They sell out within like 15 minutes of the shop opening every day. Oh, so they restock every day. Yeah. So they will not. So you can't like just get it. It's not like sold out on Thursday because they make sure everybody has, has a chance. Crack, but they sell out like f- within 15 minutes every day and it's limit one per customer. And the sec- and they're like putting them out like they're restocking as everybody's coming through and as the the guy's putting one down that someone's just taking it he's basically just handing them off they need like a wow. separate line like like a truck out back the gnome line <laughs> yes come come back here and get your gnome yeah dang okay rick so you're part but of the club one. yeah you want to see it yeah, yeah why not? not hold on i don't know if i can reach it i'm not are, are you a memorabilia guy patrick uh i will buy i, I don't really buy much Honestly, I'll buy like uh, if I went to the Masters, I'd get a polo, like something like that. Look Maybe at a that. flag. There he, there he is in all his glory. Wow, he looks pretty good. I like those pants on him. Yeah, he's, he's looking pretty good. It kind of looks like Santa Claus, but I don't think that's the intention. I don't. So what are you really... gonna do with that? Put it in a garden? You're gonna give it away? You're gonna? Well, okay. So I tried. It? I tried to buy two. I tried oh. to buy two so I could give one away. Uh. But they only. She was like, "You can only get one of these." And I was like, "Okay, well, I'll just leave this one here." Um, I think I'll just go in my backdrop, and I'm always looking for stuff to go in like the backdrop. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. so I think that's probably the most logical place. To I don't do it. like what. What are gnomes? Do they scare off like creatures in your garden? Like, do they actually serve a purpose? It is a mythological. I, a mythological no idea. Mythological creature. And diminutive, diminutive spirit in Renaissance magic and alchemy. Ooh. Um, what are their powers, though? They have powers. Well, they have. Uh, okay, they are typically small humanoids who live underground. Oh, here okay. we go. Gar- they, gar- live, they live. Yeah, garden gnomes are usually depicted as male dwarfs wearing red pointy hats. Well, this one's not. Oh, so they're like they were in like Lord of the Rings, pretty much, like The Hobbit, those type of those type of mystical creatures. Sci-fi is that is that sci-fi? Um, no, sci-fi would be like more Star Trek, right? Uh, okay, I think it's more uh <laughs> like <laughs> just mi- mystical. It's like more Game of Thrones ish. Yeah, right. Like Game of Thrones isn't sci-fi; it's mystical. Oh, hmm. so these are not to be, garden gnomes are not to be confused with garden hermits who were people encouraged to live alone in purpose built hermitages hermit. I've never heard of that word. So I'm, I'm, I'm a hermit pretty much. Uh, yeah. They remain permanently on site where they can be fed, cared for and consulted for advice or Patrick viewed for entertainment i'm gonna come view my garden hermit you never know the first cut podcast has it all 
change the logo to after dark. Uh, yeah, it's time. All right, Josh, you hit me with a hit, hit, hit a question. I don't know. I don't know if these are in advance, so let's see. Anyone caught on to bearded Scotty being 4 0? Hero API players masters. I did not catch on to that, but he looks way better with a beard. Josh caught on to that. Yeah, I, I saw it in our group chat. So, yeah, know? and I challenged it. Do you think this is Josh's burner? Ryan Weatherly. Oh, like yeah. He, Josh might have a burner. I looks think like he's get, getting married in it. It'd be a good good way to throw us off. Uh -oh. um, yeah. Yeah. Well, hmm. the thing is, uh, wait, so why did you, why did you, challenge that greg because i thought he houston i thought he but he didn't have a beard in houston i think mm -hmm. his beard also grows very fast it, uh, i guess so because he is clean shaven one day and like fully bearded like 36 hours later maybe it's a fake wow would that be the big okay would that be like the biggest thing also <laughs> uh kyle and i were talking about how the discourse around Bryson's clubs, we were surprised it wasn't more negative. So <laughs> seriously though, but like it was, it was, um, it was basically uh, depicted as like, wow, this qu crazy quirky guy invented something. Ha ha ha. 3d printed technology. And he was like, if Rafael Nadal showed up at the French open with a brand new tennis racket that had technology that no one had ever heard of or used before. And it mitigated miss hits. And it was just approved two days ago. People would be like, cheater. What are you like? What is happening here? Yeah. But it, it's so different in golf. Uh, imagine that you're at such a disadvantage designing your own irons. Are you? Yeah. Why I don't I don't blame Bryson. I will blame the USGA though. <laughs> I don't like know I feel like they I feel like they have to an answer some questions. Blame. Yeah, we're even... not blaming anyone. Sorry, that was a bit uh computational, a bit aggressive there. Uh but I think if they provided some answers, it would help clear things up. The, like the it, Tuesday it, 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 before the Masters. He put a single set of irons in play. The Tuesday before the Masters that he designed. That's like an unbelievable feat. You know how much effort goes into R&D for designing golf clubs? Like the research and develop. It's a serious process. And he designs his own and 3D prints them and they don't break. Yeah. Somebody did ask him, like, how are they holding up? He was like. Right, I think it's amazing. I gotta who get. Do you off. think? Uh, how big do you think his team is? His For lab that? techs. Yeah, it, it's it, there's a story. It's not. It, it, it's some small company. It's not like he like he didn't like. It didn't no, like, it's only he him. Didn't, like we'll go down to a 3D printer store. It is. And, it is only him. He didn't go to like Monster.com and hire like a <laughs> club maker. And they were somebody was already making clubs, and they worked with like this small boutique club maker or something. Yeah. I saw the, uh, someone put it out there that there was like Hebrew writing on the back of it. Yeah. That translates I, I to, that too. It's yeah. like a thorough. Or something. Yeah. It eventually gets to precise. Yeah. I believe. Good for him though. I mean, he, he wasn't allowed to use his machine on the putting greens at Augusta national that he uses for ball speed, which is, I, I told one of my friends that today because he's like, I think Bryson needs a new putter. I was like, no, he can't use his uh, whatever machine it's called on the putting green. So he doesn't know how hard he's hitting it. He goes, I, I think if you're, if you need to know how fast your ball is rolling, you're gone way too far. <laughs> so he got it's, clubs instead. Uh, it's called a foresight. Okay. Uh, there it Josh, is. next. Sorry. Long day. How many majors will Scotty win this year? Uh, no, no, you're not allowed to give any explanation. Greg, just give us a number. Two. Patrick. Three? Three. I mean, I'll just go with one. I mean, it's the most likely scenario, right? He's already got two, so. He's going to win the PGA. He's going to win the first two. I, I think I, he's okay. going to win the first three, Greg. If he wins, if he is, if he does win two or three, 
I really hope it's in order because it would be sick to go to U.S. Open with the slam as a possibility. Oh, yeah. 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 That would be sick. It would get some attention. It's like when the... It's like when a horse wins uh, the second leg of the Triple Crown. Right. American Pharaoh. I think that's the last one. Smarty Jones. Remember Smarty Jones? Smarty Jones. Yeah. I do remember. Big Brown. Barbaro. R.I.P. I I know. We lost Barbaro. Good one. There was one after American Pharaoh, I think, who won, right? I don't know. Josh, question. Fact or fiction, Scheffler is the best golfer we've seen since Tiger Woods. Um, fiction, but not for long. Yeah, I think it depends, which is uh, which is terrible. Like, it needs a little justification. I think guys have played better for given periods of time. Yeah, I'll I mean, like, what are you going to say? I'm going to say fact. Okay. I don't, I don't hate it. What's your definition of best though? Is yeah. it peak or like longevity and peak? Type that's, of thing, why, right? that's why you have to. Yeah. I'm going longevity, which is I'm why gonna I say, say fact. I'm going to say uh fact as well. Just because I love overreacting. Right. Right away. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> fact. Josh. Hit it, Josh. Scale of one to 10. Oh boy. How likely is Rory to, this says to never win a major. So 10 is he never, ever, ever, ever wins a major. Obviously. One is, of course, he's going to win one, you dummies. That's the scale. Um, Can't say seven, too. Uh, I'll say three. I'll say three as well. That was my number. Okay. Dang, that's like the other seven. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay. I'll go, I'll go with five. No, that's the worst. Uh, uh, Masters? Would be a totally different number. Whole whole, whole, for me. whole win one. A Masters? No, no. Well, I don't know about that. A major. Win. Yeah. He'll win a major. I agree. Whole. Totally agree. I do too. Josh, does Max Homa ever win a major? Mm, no. But I, I would say that about basically any name that popped up there. Like, this era is very difficult. There's only four a year. Even guys that we thought were completely dialed and amazing, like th- things can go sideways very, very quickly. So almost any name that popped up there, I would have said no, they don't win a major. I think Max does win a major. He's developing, he's trending, he puts so much effort into it. I just I I I think that story ends with him winning one major. I don't think he'll win a masters. Or a PGA, or a U.S. Open. <laughs> you think he's going to win an Open? I think he's going to win an Open. I had the same one in my mind. Yeah, and he's on Fair record job. saying he thinks that's his best chance at winning a major championship is an Open. Oh well, that completely changes it for me. It changes it changes everything, you know. But I mean, going back to the major conversation, waking up there this morning, there was a possibility that. Max Homa and Ludwig had the same number of majors as Scotty Scheffler. Or that Colin Morikawa had more than Rom and JT and DJ and two more than Scotty. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, just like nine hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Or the DJ? Like, I, like DJ is probably one of the guys you think of best golfer since Tiger. DJ's in that conversation. Mm-hmm. Joshua. Do we have more? How did the crowd take to Rom? Um, there was definitely a respect as defending champion, but he was never really in it. So it was never really like a thing, right? He just was, there was never enough momentum going, but he was greeted graciously as a defending champion. Good for him. Josh. Thoughts on Victor W. Ding from RBC Heritage next week. Uh, he seems like a lab boy, right? He always likes to figure it out on his own and then come back to competition. Not a, not a play through it type of guy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fine. He'll get through it. No biggie. He'll get through it long-term, but it is concerning because he did this earlier in the year. Um, I believe he withdrew from 
farmers. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he, I, I'm with you, Patrick, he'll get through it, but you know, it just feels like the, the year is going to be over before you know it. So yeah, we better get to it quick. Josh. Rick, sum up your experience, master's experience and how it compares to other exclusive events like LACC and more popular ones like the Phoenix Open. Uh, entirely different. And the exclusivity that was at LACC is like tenfold at Augusta because you're all in the bubble. So like there's like even like layers of exclusivity at Augusta National. It's like not like you're in or you're out. It's like you're in this ring, or okay, now you're in this ring, and now you're in this. Ring. It's like it, it, it's it's wild. And then you have like it feels like teachers are walking around all the time because you see like green jackets and you're like, oh, hello there, good to see you. Yeah, I did turn in my homework. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's very it's very weird like that. And no, uh, no T Swift, right? Or T yeah, Kelsey? Nah. Wow. She was at Coachella, apparently. So we got we got duped. I heard uh couldn't get tickets. I actually heard Probably from a little, little birdie that Travis was afraid of showing up at, at Augusta National and Taylor seeing Ludwig Ludwig's uh, golf swing. We okay, we need a golfer to like break through into pop culture like that, like that. Like how Travis Kelsey has now become like a could you mm. imagine if that was Ludie, Tom Kim, and Tom. it's Tom. It's Tom and Victor, right? Those are the only two single guys. Oh, Ludwig has a girlfriend, right? Yeah, I saw someone in the chat say it was a tennis player. So, I mean, he uh, he's doing his part. Yeah, cross true. sport pollination there at least. Could you imagine if Tom Kim started dating Taylor Swift? What that would do, <laughs> what that would do for what that would do for the game? No, I cannot <laughs> imagine it. Who? I okay, mean, they have, she's taken. Dua Lipa's taken. Who's like? Who's the hot thing on the street these days? I don't know. I, well, we are. This is not the crew to ask. <laughs> okay. you're, you're the one in the crew that we asked about that. <laughs> um, who's a needle mover among? Oh, like Mark Margot Robbie has a uh, a husband, I believe. Oh, Sydney Sweeney. I think Beyonce maybe. Uh, I don't know. Not a lot of, not a lot of people on the market. Hmm. No, all the stars are taken. Yeah, because they're stars, and like, I don't know. maybe, I mean, Taylor could come back on the market before. Maybe yeah, she, for music. Yeah, I know. Like, she's she's. Basically what about every- Caitlin Clark? Oh, that would be star power. She yeah, is star power. Tom okay. and Caitlin. Tom and Caitlin. That would be sick. how how tall is Caitlin Clark? Yeah, she's probably taller than he is. <laughs> At least like six one, I feel like. <laughs> six one. Okay. All right. Anything probably else? Probably around before- the same age, too. Yeah. Anything else before we uh get out of town? I got nothing. Uh great job to you guys uh this week. You guys were phenomenal. Rick on site, Greg doing CBS Sports Network. With you, it was, oh, it was yeah. a lot it was of fun. Blast. Uh, Seriously, great job I, to you too. I think that um, we should pat ourselves on the back because we got like everything done. We were we were on. You got Joe Musso did a great job. You guys were rocking with him. It the the articles went out. The gamers went out. We nailed it. Yeah, time for a company pizza party. Yeah, yeah. I'm be uh, nice to Joe. Be nice yeah. to Joe. He really, he really needs it, guys. Uh, we, I'll, I'll be filing a, a very positive report, self, self assessment for us. I'll give us a ten out of ten. Yeah. What's yeah, that? Time to write a review. Play time that. Write a review. I wish you had that video of when Donald Trump was like, "I hate to do it. I hate to do it. I give myself an A plus. <laughs> like, let's just run that video. Like, a that's, plus. That's." That's what I'm. I'll be submitting that on Monday. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. Well, on that note, we will be back uh, Monday. So, so RPC Heritage next week. That's a Siggy. That is um, 
uh, DFS preview on Monday. Uh, mega preview pod Tuesday, round by round recaps. You think we're stopping? No, we're just getting started. So we will be back and ready to rock and roll for Harbor Town. Big thanks to producer Josh. Does all the hard work behind the scenes. Patrick McDonald at P McDonald CBS. Greg Ducharme at The Real GFD. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.